Hi there, this is David Bennett Cohen, and today we're going to be working on uh, how to apply your, your solo uh, to each particular song. In other words, making the solo unique for the particular song, um, rather than just noodling. We're going to start with um, E minor blues, it's a called, song called Imagination, it's actually 16 bars, and it goes four bars of the one chord, everything, or E minor, two bars of the four chord, or A minor, back to two bars of the E minor, and then instead of going to the 5 4 1, which a normal blues would do, we're going to go back to the one chord for two measures, then to the four chord for two measures, and then we're going to go to a C, sh uh, to a C chord. The C seventh in this case, and we're going to be playing it. Um, it's called a sharp five, and we're going to go from the C seventh to the B. So it's a sharp five to a five, and then so one measure of the sharp five will C, one measure of the B, and two measures back to the one. I'll show you how it goes. This is the melody. I'll play it for you. Let me go over the blues scale here for a second. Um, okay, the minor blues scale. Right, so that's one minor three, four, flat five, five, seven, and back to the one. So, so in E it's pretty easy. E minor is a pretty easy scale. Um, it's uh, pretty much all white notes except for the B flat, which is the flat five anyway. Now, in this particular song, we're going to add the two or the nine, F sharp. Now, what that does is it softens it. If you're just playing, my, if you're just playing the minor blues scale, it becomes a blues. add the two to it, if you add the F sharp, it softens it. Um, uh, it's more like, uh, I don't want to say I want to say it, but because I'm not a jazz player, but it has a flavor of jazz. Anyway, so here we go. So I'll show you what I'm talking about there. So if I'm playing the minor blues scale, right, has, has a way of softening it. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do with that. Um, I play the, which is uh, two and four, or F sharp and the A, to the three and the five, or the G and the B. So if I'm playing, I'm going. So, let's continue on. Uh, now, that's the melody, and I'll play the melody one time, and then I'll start improvising. And uh, you sort of, you have to throw some of the melody into improvisation. I'll show you how, what I'm talking about. Now, my left hand, I'm just doing... So, it's, it's, it's kind of syncopated, but uh, you can just pedal. syncopation in it. So here we go. Here's the melody, his one verse of imagination. Remember, it's 16 bars. <laughs> Now when 
to the B. I go. And then when I go to my B chord, this is a little trick that I like to do. When I'm changing chords, I sometimes I, I like to go to the third of the particular chord. So in this case, I'm going to a B seventh chord, but I'm playing, I start with a, with a D sharp. So. And then, and that's an augmented seventh. That's a B seventh augmented fifth. So that's, I'm playing the A and the B, which is the seventh and the root, uh, with my thumb. Then I'm playing the D sharp, and then I'm playing the, the F sharp, and then for a melody, I'm going to the G. Now, that G is also the minor third of the, of the E minor blues scale. So. solo so that it makes sense. At the same time, I'm trying to include some of the melody. And of course, after a while, if, you if you're doing this for a while, you're going to get more and more complicated. And, you know, you're going to sort of lose uh, that, that melody. But that's okay, because you always come back to it. Um, uh, anyway, so that's that's uh, that's pretty much what I like to do on this one. Let me play a little bit for you, and I'll try to analyze it. If I'm going too fast, I apologize. Uh, let me slow down a little bit and go over some of the riffs that I'm playing. So, I'm going... Again, some filler. It's you. You can get the you can get the feeling of it. Let me slow it down. Uh, one more time. Okay. Now here's a couple of chords that you can use that for filler using that too. You can play it, you can play, as I did, you can play the, the two, the three, and the five together. That's F sharp, E, and B. The reason I'm describing uh, the notes of the scale 
um, rather than note the notes themselves, or well, I'm trying to do both, but is because when you transpose, you're going to understand more about how that goes. So your E minor, E minor blues scale, remember again. <laughs> Here's that chord. It's really kind of nice, a nice discord there. The thing about blues is uh, it's got a dirty feel to it, and that's so nice. All right, so, so. get a little more complicated. I'll try to make it, I'll try to make it um, accessible, a little slower. Again, there's that melody. That's, that's uh, the sharp, that's the, uh, that's the flat five to the five. put it in with the four chord. So oops. You can echo, or you can 
and then it with your left hand. And sometimes when you play a few notes, it really it accentuates everything. Um, of course, when you play a lot of notes, it's like showing off, uh, which is fine. Uh, I like to show off. But uh, also, sometimes when you bring it down, it, has a, it, it, it changes the dynamic. So here we go. Uh, we'll, we'll go through a, a verse, a normal verse, and then I'll slow it down. sort of get away with playing it. I won't play too much down here because it gets in the way of the bass, it gets in the way of the rhythm. So just keep your left hand simple. <clears throat> so we're going to go down here and we're going to do a solo. Let's let's uh, let's take it from the fi from the sharp 5. <laughs> E minor, 
just like that. So just going. Just going up. A minor. A minor. A minor seventh. A minor seventh. Back to E. There's that chord again. talking about. The melody is pretty much always contained within the scale that you're using. So if you're using the minor blues scale, the melody Since we're playing a, a, a B7, the B dominant 7th chord, and the augmented 5th, it'll work. You could even do this. Uh, right, because you're going... So, because that's, that's part of the chord, even though it's not part of the E minor blues scale, it still works because it's like the major seven, and it's like a, that's what you're doing. So you're going. I don't use it too much, but uh, it's certainly something you can do if 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 you want to get into that. So again. So again. So I'm playing it fast, and I know it's. Some can be a little confusing when you play it fast, but everything is within this scale. Everything is within this really simple E minor blues scale. The only exceptions are the two, which is part of the E minor blues scale, E minor scale anyway. And the other thing that's different is playing the A, I'm sorry, the C in the A chord, the A minor chord. Right? Here's my here's my E minor blues scale, and that makes it a little unique. It shows that it's not. It shows you know who you are. Okay. So um, what I mean by that is, um, of course, you can if you're playing the blues, you can just use. scale for the A chord, and you can even use it for the B chord. You can use it for the C chord. Well, that's what I mean by noodling. You want to make it a little more 
more shape shaped. And one of the ways you can do that is by playing the, the by throwing the melody in. Another way you can do it in, in do that is by not playing everything. In other words, leaving space within your music. Even though I'm playing a lot. Uh, so let's do it from the top. Just playing, right? Which would which would work, and sometimes it's appropriate. But for the most part, you really want to make your make your solo unique for the song. Now, of course, when somebody's singing the song and somebody's playing the song, it's obviously it's the song that you're doing. So pretty much any solo will work. But if you if you try to if you try to make it conform a little bit more to the melody, uh, then you have, I think you're ahead of the game that way. And it makes you playing a little bit more unique and a little bit more stylistic for you. Um, and, uh, you know, so especially, especially with blues, uh, you want to, you don't want to sound like everybody else. Uh, maybe just some, <laughs> right? I'm just saying that you want you really want to make your solos and your and your playing unique to you. Uh, okay, so uh, I think uh, I think I've done enough with this uh, enough with the song. Um, so I'm going to move on to another song, and this is a song, uh, another song. I'm going to play it in E. This time it's going to be an e, e E major or E E dominant seventh chord. So, uh, I play my E7 uh, because I can, uh, I, I play, because the 7th and the root are both white notes, I can play them both with my thumb. There's a few, several chords that you can do that with, you can do that with E, you can do that with G, you can do that with A, you can do it with B. Anytime there's two white notes that are the 1 and the 7th and the together, you can put, you can, you can play them with your thumb. Uh, a chord like C, however, C7, you can't do that. Right? You can't play that because they're not next to each other. So you just have to adjust. Uh, we're, not, we're not doing that. We're going to play this in E. This is a song called um, Sitting on Top of the World. Now this is, uh, it's, it, I, guess it's, I guess it's a modified 8-bar. It's actually 10-bar blues. And... Uh, I'll play the melody, it goes like this. And what I'm doing in the left hand is just like that. turnarounds I'm going the root and then I'm going to the seventh with the e, that's E to the D and then I'm chromatically down to the B just like that now normally you could do this you know this this you know this oops nice about this is you can play like that major blues scale. Let's go over the major blues scale. It's one, two, the minor third, and then the major third. We got the four, the five, the six, and the seven. Now, there's a lot of notes there, so how do you put them together? 
All right, so the melody that I'm playing goes like this. And I play the seventh when I'm playing the mel when, when I'm playing the chords. So it goes like this. The melody starts on the root, but then when I go to my third, when I go to my C sharp, I'm playing the D instead of the E. See that? So. started to say before. You can go. And so I'm going one, six, five, major third, minor third, major third. And you have to pop up from, you can't slide off, you have to use two fingers. So it's just, I'm just playing the, the one, three, five, six. Uh, forever you can play those, those notes will work 
So, but I like this, this particular melody for the turnaround. And now I'm gonna go C to B. Again, it's a sharp five to a five, but it's a turnaround. So I'm going C seventh. Oh, sorry. Which is B flat, E, and G. And then I end up on the B, B seventh, and again, I'm, because I can, I'm using I'm using my thumb to play the five, the, the, the root and the seven. So, so the turnaround goes like this. this whole verse for you and when I play the song and I use it in my repertoire I will start with the melody just like this it's like it almost like an introduction C sharp to the to the minor to the E minor blues scale. Right, it's actually still it's A, but we're using this blues scale. So and then I put the A scale, A chords in it. So here we go. play on the piano, uh, easiest key to play on the piano, but it's crucial if you're going to be playing blues, if you're playing with the guitar players, because guitar players will love E and they love A. So uh, it's really important to learn how to play them, and not just that, but you want to be able to use the major blues scale. And sometimes when you're playing it, Put the seventh in. So, so you really want to you really want to get used to used to playing that. Now, uh, just a couple of things about the E scale. When you're playing, you need two fingers to play the minor third to the major third. You can't slide off like you can in C. And I like to play as many chords as I can. So. Uh, one of the things that I really like to do is uh, have an anchor. So, so this is my anchor, the the seventh chord, the um, E, D, and the E, the seven and the root. And here I would use my second and third fingers if I want to keep that anchor going. It's easier to do this way. So my, I'm playing chord here, but I'm, I get these fingers, these fingers free to, to move around. So here we go. Major 
your scale. And then that's one and three. That's my ninth chord, my E ninth chord. If you want to make it a full chord, it's like that. So. It's just a flurry. And that's, that's, uh, okay. In terms of the E minor blue scale, it's three and five, two and four, one and three. But you're in A, so it's actually the ninth chord. So let's 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 work a little bit around this. Now again, because it's a unique song, it's got that extra two measures at the end with the turnaround. So it's it's pretty obvious what the song is if you add those two measures in. But still you wanna you wanna try to keep some of the melody in no matter how much you're playing. Here's that melody go. Again, that's a little different. song, Just Me, So that's backing it up. 
let me let me just sorry about this I'm gonna go back to imagination so when we're playing imagination and you're backing somebody you're just playing rhythm or you're singing <laughs> Do like this. Uh, let me do it from the from the sharp five. I really got to use my imagination. Here we go. So it's uh, right. So when you when you when you start this, again, I, I, I anchor on the third. That's the B chord, so I'm playing the D sharp. Turn around. So these are all things that that you know you have to you have to feel it out and and try to figure out what you're doing with these melodies. You try to keep the melody somewhere in the solo. Of course. If you're playing like more than two solos, then it's gonna get it's gonna get all over the place a little bit. Uh, but you always want to try to bring it back, uh, and to me, that's that's the that's really the essence of the best kind of soloing. Um, you listen to the you listen. <clears throat> okay, now I love the Allman Brothers, <laughs> but after a while, it gets a little boring. You know, uh, you know, playing the same thing kind of the same thing over again. It's almost like noodling. Uh, uh, so, uh, I, I try to avoid that. You know, a lot of the jam bands do that. But the best jam bands um, don't do that. They, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll shape their solos so that, you know, they'll be playing fast and they'll be playing slow. Uh, maybe the whole solo will be down here. <laughs> stands out is if you're uh, if you're playing slowly and with real feeling so let's go from the let's go from the turnaround oh sorry scale of a one chord 
and then I'll throw that C sharp in, which is part of the A chord. Actually, this is all part of the A chord. your solo it's like a story um, everything you play is like a story but the solo is a story it has a beginning it has a middle and has an end right and the beginning is uh, sometimes you know it can be anything and the middle can be anything and the ending can be anything but you want it to you want it to have some shape the same thing um, with with the song right you want the song to have dynamics so you want to make fast, slow, loud, soft, um, slow, fast. It's, it's, it's the kind of thing where you mix things up and it really, it really brings, out, brings out the music in, in the music. Uh, does that make sense? <laughs> Never mind. So here we go. nothing to do with the melody but it's you know when you again I'm playing the song so of course the the solo is gonna be of a song right but if you can put some of the something that makes sense into it uh, that's you know that 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 works you want to make your solo unique you want to make your solo unique to you uh, that's not, uh, and there's, there's a limited amount of notes that you can play, so of course you're gonna sound like other people sometimes, but you really wanna make it your own, and you wanna, you wanna shape your solo so that you have, again, you're telling a story. Uh, sorry. Just going. That's all in the A. G sharp on the bottom, which is the 
third of the E chord. So I'm going. So. Okay, let me go back to imagination for a minute. Uh, and this is how I do the song. I'll start it with a, I'm pedaling on the bass and I'm going. So I'm playing E minor, F sharp, two, three in the minor scale. So it's E, F sharp, G. So E minor, F sharp minor, G, F sharp minor. Second time, I'm moving it up. And that's, that's an inversion with the E on top. Now I'm going to do an inversion with the G on top. Now, it's, it looks like an A chord, but in context, it's still the, I, I just play it this way. Sometimes I'll just play the C sharp and the A. Go to my G chord. Move it up. Now I'm playing first position with a B on top. And then I'm going back to the first thing that I did down there. So one more time. before he ended the song. You don't have to do it that way. But, you know, you just play. So, let's go. That's just an 
E minor, E minor seven, B, D, E, G. It all blends together. today is helpful. Um, I hope it made some kind of sense. I hope that, uh, you know, uh, everything is, uh, you know, everything is clear. Um, I want to do a little commercial here. I'll be playing with uh, Kerry Carney and the uh, Kings, of Psych Kings of the Psyche Delta. Um, it's a wonderful band. It's Kerry, uh, who's just an amazing guitar player. He's got the rhythm section from Savoy Brown. His, that's his, actually his reg, regular rhythm section. Uh, Mario Steano and Jerry Sorrentino. He's got uh, Michael Falzerano, played with uh, Hot Tuna and New Riders of the Purple Sage. He's got uh, Liberty, uh, Nydia Li Liberty Mata. Uh, she played oh, forever with... Uh, um, Laura Nairo, and got me uh, from Country Doe and the Fish. So he's got some, you know, he's got some names there, and it's actually a wonderful band. Uh, we'll be playing on the 27th at the Metropolitan Cafe in Glen Cove, I believe. Uh, you can you can you can check it out on on uh, on the web on Facebook. Uh, just go to Kerry Carney and the Kings with the Psycho Delta. Um, I play. Uh, the first and third Mondays of every month at Big Ed Sullivan's Blues Jam in the city at the Red Lion uh, from 7 to 10. It's uh, the best blues jam. I've been going to blues jams for over 50 years, oh, more than that. I've been going to blues jams forever, it seems like. And this is the best blues jam I've ever been to. It's run great, great musicians, and the house band is dynamite. Uh, so, again, uh, the Red Lion, first and third Mondays of every month, but check. Uh, if you want to come in, uh, and uh, it's from 7 to 10. And then uh, I would just keep your, eye, keep your eyes and ears open, and I hope, uh, I hope to see you. If you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to uh, uh, instant messages, message me on Facebook. Uh, I'll be happy to try to answer your questions. And... Uh, as long as it's not like, what's the meaning of life? <laughs> so, so thank you very much. This has been uh, enjoyable for me. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. And thank you, Peter Hansen, for uh, asking me to do this. And that's it. Bye-bye. <laughs>